Welcome to Pearl Practice, your guide to refine, enliven, and illuminate the piano repertoire. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is on the minuet in G minor from the Notebook for Anna Magdalena Bach uh, by J.S. Bach. Uh, Clavier Buchlein der Anna Magdalena Bach is the German title. I'm sure I didn't say that quite right. But um, this piece, uh, if you didn't know, the, the Clavier Buchlein uh, der Agnelin Anna Magdalena Bach was compiled by Bach as a pedagogical uh, tool that he would teach his students from. These are all kind of beginner pieces, and I'm going to show you just a few ideas today to help with technique, musicality, and interpretation. This is the piece. So nothing too grandiose, you know, minuet, very gentle, innocent. But it's actually, if you think about it, very related to the one just right before this. Christian Petzold wrote both of them. He was an organist from Dresden. Bach didn't actually write these ones. It's uh, mistakenly often referred to by, as by J.S. Bach, but he's the one who compiled it. Uh, and they actually think that Anna Magdalena may have had something to do with that because they found a lot of her own uh, a lot of these pieces in that Magdalena, in that notebook that are in her handwriting. So uh, it's very related to the one right before it in the notebook. You know, so we see that fifth jump and this, we see that fifth jump and then we see in G minor and then we see this in the G major. So they're very related. Um, the first thing that I like to do is I like to think about the expression and the mood that I want to create. Okay, so I don't think I want this nice, heavy, kind of, uh, you know, a, a more aggressive feel. I want a more gentle, dreamy approach. If you've watched my video on the, the G major minuet, I went over a few of these concepts. I just want to review a couple of them really quick. The first one is that in Baroque music, when you have leaps, you can sometimes uh, disconnect them. But when you have stepwise motion, uh, you, you don't necessarily want to be playing. So in any kind of Baroque music, you want, you want just a little bit of variety with your articulation. You don't need everything to be totally legato or totally staccato. Also, I would suggest buying an or text edition, U-R-T-E-X-T. -E that means original text. That means that the scholars who put it together aren't writing in their own ideas or suggestions about dynamics or interpretation or things like that. It's going to give you the most pure score, and you're going to notice Bach's music is pretty bare. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. So today we're definitely going to discuss some interpretation ideas, how we can think about where to crescendo, where to diminuendo, and don't be clouded by this notion that, oh my gosh, since this was written for harpsichord, we can't have any dynamic shadings. That's ridiculous. Uh, there's plenty of ways to add variety in harpsichord, especially just by displacement. This sounds really bad on piano, but if you play this on harpsichord like this, it'd sound pretty good. And this last semester at the University of Michigan, I had the, I had the opportunity to study with one of the world authorities on this subject. I mean, he is one of the most... Uh, renowned scholars on this subject and uh, certainly a very famous harpsichord player and and he was so adamant from day one that 
you can have a lot of variety when you're playing these pieces. You don't have to play it strictly. Uh, you do want a strict meter. You don't want to be like bending the tempo like crazy everywhere, but you can have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that to help the music breathe a little bit. But you also don't feel like you have to be in this straight jacket. First of all, that's no fun to play like that. It's not expressive at all, it's not interesting. And second of all, it's not what music's about. It's about music is always about expression. So since we're on a modern piano, yes, the dynamics shouldn't be super stormy and then tiny and then huge. We wanna keep it in kind of a nice conservative range, but within that you can breathe and you can come up and down. Let's get right to it. Start with little pieces. I suggested in the previous video doing two bar increments at once. For this, just to create a little variety, I'm going to do four bar increments at once. If you feel that this is too hard for your current level to do four bars at once, then just go back to two. But I'm just going to do four for the sake of uh, time here and since I already did the other way in the other video. Here we go. I'm going to count out loud. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and... and let's think about how could we shape that? Go to there and then less. So, da, 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 to there and then less all the way to there. That sounds pretty nice. into there. So if we go, that sounds really nice. So it kind of dies away and then it rocks back in there. Let's try left hand, super easy. One and two and three and 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 one. Okay, write in all of your counting if you need it. There is no shame at all in that. I write in my fingerings for almost every single piece I play, especially etudes, hard ones where I need to dissect the section down. I want to know exactly what finger goes where. So uh, don't feel like, oh, I'm a beginner, so I have to do this. I can't wait for the day. I'm not going to have to do it. Because honestly, I still do it. it. It's an extra layer of security when I'm practicing, and it's a time saver too. So feel free to write in your fingering. Feel free to write in your counting, whatever else you do, uh, dynamics, whatever you feel. So let's try this. Now, we want to keep... This is something I didn't go over in the G major minuet. We want to keep the right hand uh, louder than the left hand. So let's go over an exercise that you can do. To, because Thank you so much for watching. As with all pro practice videos, the first section is free. If you'd like to view the rest of this video, or if you're interested in learning more about pro practice, just click on the link on this screen or on the link in the comments section below. Thank you for your support of pro practice.